Hey, welcome back. We're looking at 2010 number two here. Okay, number two is dealing with sampling distributions. So let's get to that. Go ahead and pause the video if you do not have a copy of it. Remember, you could always Google this if you want to. Just Google 2010 AP Stats FRQ. It'll show up. So go ahead and take a second to read through this. So reading through it, you know, what we're doing is we're taking a sample and then we're finding the mean, right? So it's sample mean. We're going to have a sample mean, uh, a sampling distribution of means is what we're looking at here. And so we have 40 songs, okay? And the mean is roughly 3.9 and a standard deviation that's from the population of songs is 1.1. So the first part I want you to describe the sampling distribution. This is some key uh, terminology for tell me what the mean and the standard deviation is, essentially. That's the, the short version. I want you to tell me about the shape of it, we'll get to that, and then the mean and the standard deviation. That's how you can describe the sampling distribution. So looking at this, the sampling distribution of the mean song length. So notice I'm just using the same words that are in the question. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample mean song length, okay? So the sampling distribution of the mean song length will have a mean of, well, when you take a sample and you find the mean from a population that has a mean of 3.9, your sampling distribution should also have a mean that is equal to whatever the population is. So they should be the same. So I'm gonna go like this. So the mean, we'll call it mu of x, uh, mu of x bar should equal the mean of your population, which is 3.9, doesn't change. And I'm going to add minutes because I love my units and the standard deviation. So here's where we have to use a formula. We have a formula for the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. So we'll use sigma of X bar and that is always going to equal whatever the population standard deviation is divided by the square root of N. Ta -da. So in this case, standard deviation of our sampling distribution would equal here's this is sigma, this is the standard deviation for the population, so it would equal 1.1 divided by the square root of n, and n is always how many songs you have in this case, it's the total number, so we're going to put 40, and when we work all of that out, we get about approximately, let's put some squiggle arrows, or squiggle equal sign here, that equals 0 0.174. There we go. So we have described the mean and the spread. The next thing we could do is describe the shape of it. Now, because n equals 40, what do we know from the central limit theorem? Well, you know, I didn't put that down. Also, because n equals 40, the shape should be approximately normal. And you know, I'm going to add, according to the central limit theorem, that's going to make lots of people happy if I use the central limit theorem as uh, my justification for the shape. Because whenever you're taking a sampling distribution of means and n is approaching 40, and some teachers use 30, so above 30 and above 40, this one's 40, so you're definitely good. The shape should be approximately normal. Done. That was part A. Not too difficult. You just have to know your rules for sampling distribution. Next part. If the program manager schedules 80 minutes of news and advertisements for the four-hour show, uh, and only 160 minutes are available for music, approximately what is the probability that the total amount of time needed to play 40 random selected rock and roll songs exceeds the available airtime? Sometimes students read this, they think it's a probability question, but it's really not. Um, just because it says what is the, well, I guess it is a probability question, isn't it? What is the probability? But it's not involving that part of the course. This is really, it's just playing off of what we did up here. So if if you're looking at a question and you're like, I don't know what direction they want me to go, go back to this. Okay, so this right here, if we were to sketch it, I'm going to sketch it. It's approximately normal. Okay, not bad for me. Early morning here. Uh, the mean, so I'm going to put a mean here. What do we say? 3.9. So the mean is 3.9. And sigma for x bar, or the standard deviation of our sampling distribution, is... 0 0.174 so you better believe they're going to want you to use this right so we're talking about mean of 3.9 so how does that tie into this problem here well we have 160 minutes for music and we have 40 songs 
So if we take 160 minutes, that's what we have, and 40 songs, then that means that the average, right, and that's what we're finding here, so the average song length should be four minutes. So it should be four minutes per song. That's what we're looking at. So if the average is greater than four, then I know the total will be more than 160 minutes. If the average is equal to four, it will equal 160. And if the average is less than four, it'll be less than 160. So where is four on this graph? What I'm gonna do is I am going to actually, remember one standard deviation away is kind of like halfway down this curve. So like right here, this would be approximately what? Three points, oh goodness. I have to work all that out in my head, it's crazy. So if we add 0.174 to 3.9, we get point, or we get 4.074. And the reason I do that is because I want to get a good idea of how much of this curve approximately should we expect to be above four minutes. So, you know, four is like probably like here-ish, right? So I'm, I really want this part of the curve. So the way we can figure that out, we want to do normal calculation here. So we're going to use normal CDF. And the thing is, you have to tell them exactly what you're doing, right? So we're going to say that the lower bound is going to equal four and the upper bound should equal probably one E99. That's how we do infinity, right? So if we're not sure about that, one E99, that is infinity. That's how we put it in the calculator. And we also have to tell what the mean is, 3.9. 3.9 and then sigma in this case is 0 0.174. So let's put that all in the calculator. So we bring up our calculator here. So we go into distributions. I uh, would've got choice two, right? So we want from the probability that it's four or greater. So remember infinity as we go to the right, I always use one. We can hit the E right here, 99. We have mu of 3.9, and then I love being super precise. So remember our standard deviation was 1.1 divided by the square root of 40. So that's what I'm gonna put in my calculator, 1.1 divided by the square root of 40, which does give us, it'll give us that number right there, but I'm just extra like that, you know? I'm extra, so I put it all in, and I get 0.2827, we'll say. So let's write that down. We're gonna say this all is approximately equal to 0 0.282659. Perfect. But now, because we're in AP stats, probably should make a statement that's in context. So I would write it out. There is a 28.3% chance that the total amount of time exceeds 160 minutes. So now what I'm gonna pull up is the scoring guideline for this question and some things you should be aware of as you're completing the question. So I'm gonna go right down here to the notes. So you can Google these all the time too, 2010 FRQ Solution Guide. And they'll tell you how to score it with a number of points, but here are the notes. Describing the sampling distribution as normal instead of approximately normal does not earn credit for the shape component. So it's really important that you say approximately normal. Okay, that's the first thing. To earn credit for the spread, the response must show how the standard deviation is calculated. So if you just put the answer down uh, and you don't show where the numbers come from, like up here, uh, you will not get credit, so make sure that you do that. If the response contains incorrect notation or terminology, it's at best scored a partial. So you want to make sure that you're not losing out on points there. Okay, that was really important for that part. Um, other notes, this is for part B. Calculator syntax, an answer containing normal CDF with no additional work or labeling is at best partial. If an appropriate sketch with a mean of standard deviation correctly labeled accompanies the calculator command or if the mean and standard deviation used in the calculator command are clearly identified, then it should be essential. So please don't just write down your calculator syntax and then that's it alone. What did we have? We also had a sketch and then in here we label the parameters. So that's important as well. Hey, how's that? That was number two from 2010. That is a good question. They will definitely ask you about sampling distributions on your FRQs. Good luck to you.